Welcome to another installment of Clout is One Hell of a Drug. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, Mindy. You're watching Swell Entertainment. And today we were talking about um, a couple of different things. There's a lot involved in this one phenomenon online. But at the core of all of this are actual people that are losing their lives or have lost their lives or have gone missing and family members and loved ones that are dealing with the loss of someone. And so because I have to talk about some of these things, I want to be as respectful as possible, but I also want to make sure that you all know that if you, for whatever reason, need to click off of this video because you feel upset or what have you, you absolutely can do that. You're not going to hurt my feelings. It's okay. We're dealing with sensitive topics. People have different tolerances for different things. If you don't think you can handle it, please do not suffer on behalf of me being able to get a few extra views, okay? Okay. So today we are talking about a guy named Ken Wax. Just a blanket, everything I am talking about is alleged. Nothing is confirmed. I am not saying that Ken has, I, mm, okay. At the core of what Ken experienced originally, I think he experienced something that for him was very scary and that it has blown up past that and that he has lost the plot a little bit or in, I believe his own words, I think at one point he says he was lost in the sauce, the clout sauce, if you will. But I don't want to discount that I, I do believe he went through something that was scary for him. And that's his original video where he talks about how uh, you need to be careful uh, if you're a man leaving a bar because someone just tried to abduct me. If you are walking home alone by yourself at night in Chicago and a car rolls up and rolls down the window and someone inside the car, unmarked car, beater of a car, asks if you need a ride, do not get in that car. This has now happened to me twice in the last six weeks that I can think of. Like, people are going missing. Like, I think this is some kind of connection because like, they're probably just waiting for people who are drunk and it's an easy target. Like, holy shit, stay safe. Like, do not do it. And when I originally saw this video, cause this did pull across my For You page, this happened, gosh, back at the, around the middle end of March is when I first saw his video. When I first saw it, I just truly thought that this was a man experiencing what it's like for a woman to leave a bar alone for the first time. And that he was very freaked out because he had never experienced something like this. And that's all I thought it was. I'm not trying to discount that that was a scary thing that had happened, but when he started jumping into the serial killer territory, I truly was like, I don't buy that because, you know, not to make a big statement, but like, you know, if this is happening to women only, then it's like, you know, it's, it's assault culture. It's being a woman. If it's happening to a man, then it's a serial killer. You know, it's like, that's what it was coming across as to me initially. I thought that's what this was, was that this was a case of someone who was experiencing something that for him was a foreign concept because for the most part, men don't have to worry about, you know, being out and about drunk and in public. Not that things do not happen to men when they are drunk in public and alone. What Ken describes is that he was leaving a bar and that he wasn't drunk, but he had left a bar alone late at night and someone had pulled up alongside him, asked him if he wanted a ride. He said no, and then they sped off immediately. And I think in one of the other, he said this had happened to him twice and then he made his video the second time it had happened. And then in one instance, there was another car that followed right after them, after like idling behind them and all this stuff. And I understand that in the moment that is, terrifying, okay? As someone who has had similar instances happen to me, not leaving a bar, but other instances of, I'm someone who travel alone. I go out alone quite a bit. This is very common, specifically after events or spots. For example, you're waiting for a lift. There's a lot of surge prices. You're looking for your phone and someone walks up and says, you need a ride? Are you waiting for a ride? Just walks up to you and immediately starts trying to get you to come into their car. Traditionally, the answer is obviously, no, I'm fine. My friend is picking me up. No, I have a ride. They're almost here, that type of thing. Just getting them away. Not always is it something murdery, assaulty, that type of thing. Sometimes it's just give me your money. I'm not letting you out of my car, which is scary and can turn deadly and dangerous at any point. But the answer is always no. If you don't know the vehicle, if you have, if they do not have a taxi that you can track and see in front of you, the answer is not is no. You're not just getting in someone's car. It's the same reason that when you guys reach out to me, when I'm traveling, hey, I, let's go get lunch. Like I can, I want to introduce you to my family. No, I'm not getting in your car. It's just, it's not happening. I'm sure you guys are great, but I have no way of knowing. So I'm not getting in your car, no offense. But that's my point there is like you, there's just, certain safety things that you just think of. But Ken's belief was that there were people who guys who think they're tough and strong and can handle it are offered a free ride and will just get in the car because they're drunk and they want to go home. And then that is when they are taken advantage of and eventually their 
bodies are allegedly dumped in the river in Chicago and in other places as well. One of his things I thought was interesting is he said a woman, they know better than to do this with women because women are smarter than that. They'll never get in the car. A woman knows better than to get in the car. The point with bringing all this up is that I had a lot of issues with his framing of things very early on as someone who has experienced bad things. Not because I didn't believe that he was scared or experiencing this and trying to prevent it for other people, but that when it's women, it's, okay, why was she out drunk alone? Why did her friends not help her? You know, why was she getting that drunk in public? And then when it happens to men, this is an epidemic, this is a serial killer. Prior to all of the situation, Ken was working at Walmart, he says that himself, uh, in corporate level, I believe is what he's saying and then was also working for a startup for an app called Foresight. This is important, it's going to come up later. He did a whole strategy meeting about how he was basically the whole marketing department and did a whole couple of videos about how he was gonna pitch and be like, here, this is what you can do, I'm gonna do this, and basically brought his equity in the company from 1% to six to 7%, I believe. In 10 minutes, I have a meeting with the CEO of the startup I've been working at the last six months, and I'm gonna ask for a promotion to the chief marketing officer, CMO. I am the marketing department, so I should be CMO. And I'm gonna ask for a pay increase for my hourly rate and we're gonna have to cut my commission back a bit and I'm probably gonna ask for more equity. He tried a couple of different biz videos about like, oh, this is why this business is like this. This is how this person is a genius. He did a whole kind of almost girl boss thing where he uh, made a couple of videos about female CEOs and billionaires and uh, how they're just brilliant businesswomen and all this stuff. And I, I thought that was interesting. I don't know. It seemed like he was trying to kind of figure out what would click when he made content. And they were getting good views. I wanna make that very clear. And side note, um, I should note, because other people have talked about this, there have been instances prior to this of where Ken was called out for stealing uh, content and news coverage from another TikTok creator. But for a lot of his videos, aside from uh, one that got 2.2 million views about um, the only billionaire I've ever truly admired, Sarah Blakely, there's a lot of like 34,000 views, 75K views, 373,000 views, a good amount of views, but nothing where it's like, you know, like insane amounts of views until PSA for my Chicago people do not accept a ride from a stranger. This has happened two times to me. I feel like at this point, we're just kind of in a fear mongery space. I'm trying to think of the wording here because I truly think that though there is inherent fear around the concept of serial killers, there is also a comfort, stay with me, in the idea of a serial killer because then all of these deaths can be attributed to one boogeyman or a clump of boogeymen versus just random acts of violence because that's not really something that can be eradicated. Does that make sense? I don't know if I explained that right. There are certain similarities in a lot of these crimes in the Chicago area and in other states that Ken has talked about and said this is like a whole thing. And basically they're trying to say that this is the smiley face killer gang. Smiley face murder theory. The smiley face murder theory, also known as the smiley face murders, smiley face killings, and smiley face gang, is a theory advanced by retired New York detectives Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte, as well as Dr. Lee Gilbertson, a criminal justice professor and gang expert at St. Cloud State University. It alleges that a number of young men found dead in bodies of water across several Midwestern American states from the late 1990s to the 2010s did not accidentally drown as concluded by law enforcement agencies, but were victims of a serial killer or killers. The term smiley face became connected to the alleged murders when it was made public that the police had discovered graffiti depicting a smiley face near locations where they think the killers dumped the bodies in at least a dozen of the cases. Gannon wrote a textbook case study on the subject titled Case Studies in Drowning Forensics. The response of law enforcement investigators and other experts has been largely skeptical. This is just on Wikipedia. I can link it down below. But it's my understanding that in a lot of these instances, the smiley face graffiti that they're referring to had predated when those bodies had been there. They were not fresh graffiti that were there. And also a smiley face is a very easy thing to do with spray paint. To say that it's like, that is like a calling card for these murders is a stretch. So Ken started po posting about this publicly um, and he duetted a video from Barstool from 2022, actually talking about like, we think there's a serial killer in Chicago. And Ken was like, I know there is because of X. There's a serial killer in Chicago and I was almost one of their victims. Hey Mark, my name's Ken and I'm sorry we're meeting like this, but I've probably been tagging your video over a hundred times. I've been building a map and this is you now on my map. So what you're looking at is black is where people were found in rivers or lakes. Purple is where women were missing who ended up being found in one of those locations. Uh, orange 
what you are is an attempted pickup. Mainly this is my issue again with, you know, uh, everything is a true crime podcast at the end of the day, it seems with uh, when it comes to TikTok, even unfolding cases. We saw this quite a lot with the Idaho murders with the students that were killed. Sure enough, uh, TikTok, a lot of people that I had seen that I kept, I kept start, I started blocking people because I was like, God, you guys are speculating about young adults that are murdered in their home. Like this is horrific. Why are you guys, you're so excited that they found this thing. This is so, that means that this is real. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go insane. Like what? Like accusing people left, right and center. And then sure enough, the guy that allegedly hasn't been convicted yet. No one guessed him because they hadn't made any of that public. And there were people who were like, I can't believe they never told us about that because they were trying to catch the guy. Not all information of a case needs to be made public. I have a lot of issues with the police force. I have a lot of issues with cops and their investigations and the fact that a lot of the crimes that they set out to solve, they don't get solved, okay? But there are certain things that are procedural for a reason and not disclosing all information about a case is important for solving cases in a lot of instances. Basically, a lot of what Ken was saying was that he was like trying to make it public because the police were doing anything and the media wasn't doing anything because they don't think there's anything here. There is enough here. And he kept saying, they're not investigating and they're not taking it seriously because someone offering you a ride is not a crime, even if their intention is to kill you. A car is not a weapon in and of itself. It can be made into a weapon, but it's not in its existence. Offering someone a ride is not inherently a threat. You're basically saying like, oh yeah, the possibility of a crime happening is what you want these people to allegedly be charged with. But Ken was talking about his experience and saying, if this has happened to you, please reach out. If you survived, like, please reach out. And there was people who said I was offered a ride. They sped off. Some people said I was offered a ride. I blacked out. I woke up near the water, but not in the water. And all of my stuff was stolen. And I feel like I've been roofied. Someone said they use GHB. Ken has continued to make a bunch of claims, including that he went to the police meeting and was originally not allowed in because we're not gonna talk about serial killers. Uh, one of the people who told me that they were going has already gotten there and has been turned away from the police. Apparently it's for residents only of the building. They put it in a residential building, not in a public forum like a library. Have testimony from 20 other people about their experiences. So let's see what happens. Update, the cops knew who I was, knew I was coming, and wouldn't let me in the building initially because they said I didn't live in the beat. I actually do live in that beat area. She's like, we're not talking about serial killers. I'm like, I'm not talking about serial killers. I'm talking about a serious public safety concern. He started mentioning at the end, it's like, oh, and I'm working, I've just been doing this and then working on my corporate job and working on the app that I co-founded, Foresight, and just kind of mentioning the app here and there in a few videos. Then someone commented, Ken, can you do a video about what your app does from Jazzy Min W's comment. Hey Jasmine, hope you've been well. I would love to show you what I've been working on. For the last eight months or so, I've been building this app called Foresight. Now, when I click this video, that video is gone. So I believe that is one of the videos where he had been like, this is the situation. By the way, I have an app, that type of thing, because the video has been deleted. And I believe he mentioned in the apology video, we're going to talk about that. He said a few videos are going to be deleted, but he starts talking about the app. And for the nature of this video, because I'm thorough and annoying, I downloaded the app. It's an organization app and a travel app for organizing with your friends and events. You can see why someone would find this useful. Do I think it's anything groundbreaking at this point in time? Not particularly. I put a couple of things in here. I have an event tonight. So like, here's the app. I'm on the leaderboard for orbs. There's a whole leaderboard for some reason. Could win $500, $250, or the, I'm currently in third place. I'll win $150 at the end of this month if I'm still in third place. Uh, why? More downloads, more posting. I don't know. Adding friends, referrals. You get orbs for referral people. Um, I didn't refer anyone. I got orbs because I... Um, started filling out my financial information, but I did not buy premium, but they were like, oh, tell us like your stats of like what you make in a month. And I just filled in random numbers, got a bunch of points for that. And then I added a profile picture. So I now have 12,750 points or orbs. I get foresight. It's like a crystal ball orbs. Bleh, I get it. I don't see the relevance to the app you're trying to build. It seems like a lot of everything in once. And then I have a show tonight that I'm going to. So it says like tonight, all that. I'm traveling next week, so I added that in. They have the travel option, which is like their whole thing. Now, what I thought was interesting is I had tapped Croatia. There's nothing in Croatia for them, but it had brought me to Florence like randomly. And then it told me that like I was out of searches. I couldn't search anymore. 
Um, so most of the things that can do with their travel side of things, which they keep advertising it as a free app, that's part of the premium program where you have to sign up for that to be able to use those. You can really do with my understanding is refer friends at this point in time, schedule things in your calendar, and I think invite friends to your events for at least a limited number of events, if not any. But the travel whole portion of like, oh, budgeting and planning your travel and planning events with friends and things like that. I can understand why that would be useful for people versus just, hey, we're all in the same Google Doc. I get it, I understand it. Do I think this is important to promote when you're also trying to talk about how there might be a serial killer in your neighborhood? Not particularly. That'd be like me suddenly pausing this to start, you know, promoting my music that I don't have. I don't have music, but like, like just imagine I'm randomly talking about something super serious and all of a sudden, but be sure to download my new song. But then he partnered the with Under the Desk News a little bit to talk more about it. And Under the Desk News shared how the story only this person seems to be able to tell because the media is not talking about it and the cops are not talking about it. On April 14th, one of the headlines was about how this guy was using spreadsheets to track suspicious deaths in Chicago. The story was about how interesting it was that this guy was putting together this spreadsheet showing suspicious deaths and how men were ending up in the river and how the police weren't necessarily taking it super serious. In the video, I clarify that I don't think that's necessarily the case. But remind people, if you're leaving the bar at night, it's really important to be checking the license plate of the Ubers that you get into and not accepting rides from strangers. Reporters at The Daily Dot and The Independent also covered this story. In the weeks since, Ken has made a whole bunch of claims that I'm not going to get into because I have no way of verifying them or debunking them. But at the heart of it, it does seem like he's gone a bit off the rails and is perhaps using some of the attention that he got for his victim's advocacy work to promote an app that he's a part of. For me personally, Ken has betrayed my trust and I'm no longer following him for updates on what's happening in Chicago. Now, I'm not gonna say this person's name, but it does seem like one of the people that he had spoken about being missing. The indicators are there that this person may have taken their own life and they had just been found in the same area as the other victims and had gone missing in the same area as the other alleged victims. That's why I'm not sharing their face or photo or anything like that because I don't know for certain and that's a very sensitive topic for the family. Oh yeah, he claimed that someone showed up to his house um, and said, hi, I work with the smiley face murders, or cases, it was a detective, and then they went and met and then apparently his parents called the police because they were worried about him because he didn't answer them for like two hours or something. A lot happening. I think he's deleted quite a few of his videos because of everything that's gone on and the response that he's made. A private investigator just showed up at my house. This is real. Posting now, just in case. Somebody just knocked on my door and it's 8.30 at night on a Sunday. And so I go and I check in and it's not someone I know. And so I open and I'm like, what's up? And they're like, hey, my name's X and I'm a private investigator looking into the smiley face group um, and they asked me if I'd been in touch with a different detective that someone had put me in touch with so that's who was like trying to get him involved and in all this stuff and that he is basically now on the case officially let's say despite everything else but the app despite everything that everything up until this point that uh, Ken has been able to find has communicated has shared has been true the moment that the detective had gone to him and said, hey, we like your coverage. We'd really like your help with this, especially that he says it's because of his mapping and the tracking that he's been doing because he's been mapping where all of the uh, bodies have been found. And I think their last locations and their ages and their dates and things like that and has been mapping all that. And so he claimed like, yeah, they want to help. They want me to help with the mapping and all of this stuff. OK, once he is now part of the alleged task force, you are officially on the case. That is when you stop posting immediately. You are no longer a citizen detective. You are now part of an official operation. Regardless of what, what channel it's in, once you are actually a part of the investigative team, you stop posting. That's when it's no longer, let's see how much, you know, you've done the community outreach. Hey guys, because of the nature of this, I cannot share anything more because now we're gonna be dealing with a lot more sensitive information. And it, the best way to handle this is to make sure that the people that we are going after are not aware of what we have found on them. That's the important bit here. Also, I don't know, Ken's very forward facing in a lot of these videos. This is dangerous. What are these people, f you live in the city that this is allegedly happening in, you know? Like you've apparently been to the bars that the, they're going to, you know? Like you're putting yourself in danger by being like, hey, we figured it out. Like what if they come after you? This is just, the lack of self-preservation is crazy when this all started as, I think, a fear of, someone hurting him or something horrible happening to him, which is, that fear is normal. And again, I'm not trying to discount that fear, that initial feeling, but what this has become is out of control. So once you are now officially part of the task force, you stop sharing, you're done. Hey guys, I am safe. I have to step away from posting because I am involved in this case. 
I will update you when I can, but for now, this is the last update. You know, if you have any leads, what have you, you can reach out here, email, phone number, whatever, okay? That is where you end it. So the 23rd, I'm assuming more videos have been deleted since then, uh, but the 23rd and then the next day is the 26th where someone said, if a TikToker cracks the case, I'm going to be so impressed. And he said, well, last night at two in the morning, I did crack the case. I hope you're ready for this then because last night at three in the morning, I cracked the case. I called him this morning and gave him that license plate number. He's having it run right now. And while that might help us crack into that one particular person in Chicago, this is a much bigger issue than that. There's still more people just in Chicago. We're not even talking about Pittsburgh. We're not talking about Wisconsin, but we will be. The inspirational mu music behind these TikToks, I think is also what's making me think this is like some sort of stage play at this point for him. So in this video, Ken says that we found someone gave us a license plate and then not long after someone gave us the description of the car that matched the driver that had the similar start license plate of the license plate that we had had. This morning, I gave that to Detective Gannon and he is running that right now. Meaning they don't know what this means yet. Meaning you don't post about it. Meaning you're giving these people time, if this is true, to get rid of the car, to come after you, to leave town. I get you want answers, but there's a level of critical thinking that I think is missing from this discussion here. I get you want to be the one to crack the case because uh, last night I cracked it. You haven't cracked anything yet. You don't have proof of anything yet. You have a lead. That's what you have. But that doesn't mean anything. That lead could be a dead end. There are plenty of instances where they think they find the guy because it matches these things and then it's not the guy. But if any of this is true, you are doing shoddy police work, if any work whatsoever. Like it's just, mm, it's bad. It's not good. You know, it's, it's bad. By the time we got to this post is where people were really like, I think he might be having a manic episode. Now, I am not going to say that he is having a manic episode because I don't think it's a good idea to diagnose someone I have never met, but I think that he has lost the plot a little bit at the very least. We now have additional resources that we never had access to before. We're gonna be able to get autopsies. We're gonna be able to get medical reports. We're gonna be able to move at speeds that this investigation that they have officially reopened into the smiley face gang. Did they find smiley face graffiti on any of the sites? Cause that's like what you get, that's the connector. Have they? I'm just asking, uh, I, I'm just asking. Follow up video right after, this is from five days ago. I built a base camp for my startup foresight, the investigation and my partnership such as Dion's Chicago Dream. Oh, Dion's Chicago Dream is a uh, uh, charitable organization that uh, donates food to Chicagoans. That is good. I think that's great to promote that. That's wonderful. Um, I will link their website down below as well. He basically did a paid partnership with Basecamp says paid partnership, that's wonderful. I'm about to build a base camp. I have so much work to do and not enough time in the day to do it all. So I'm bringing in a team to help me across my three core projects. The three projects I've been working on are my startup foresight where I'm the co-founder and chief marketing officer. We've been growing like crazy and it's a lot of work and I've had to bring on help. There is the investigation, which is obviously huge and multi-state and maybe multinational at this point. He's very excited when he talks about the investigation in the later videos, which makes me, I mm, I get wanting justice and being excited because you found a lead, but you almost seem giddy when you're talking about that. And that's just my opinion watching your content, okay? I finished my base camp and it is so cool. I have tried other softwares before, but this one is amazing. Look, you can actually add all of the various people to whatever project that they are actually on. It gets you your assignments. You can see all the different maps I have coming up. The first brand deal, because you're talking about, oh, clout is such a fucking drug. Oh my God. And I say that as someone who's a content creator, I say that as someone who has some clout, you know, but like, God, this is where, I recently came to the realization that I get along much better with content creators who have had traditional jobs in some capacity, whether they worked retail or they were a lawyer in another life or did real estate or something like that, because they have a lot more perspective on real life and day-to-day -day life, if that sounds weird, than the online cyber life that comes with being a content creator full-time. And you would think that Ken would also be in that category of people who get it, but like to do a brand deal when you are getting a lot of views for talking about 
alleged murders is insane. And I'm comfortable saying that because that is crazy. Base camp, wow, great, great, great choice of partner. Hey, we love what you're doing. We think this is important. We wanna do a brand deal with you to popularize where you can help organize the investigation. What? His assignments for base camp are Wisconsin map making in the investigation, Pittsburgh map making in the investigation, Utah map making in the investigation, scribe brand deals and social media partnerships. By the way, these are clout glasses. When I searched clout, this was just one of the images that popped up and I thought it worked. Cause I can't put his face up there. He will sue me. He's tr allegedly trying to sue two creators who have been vocal against him. I mean, you can try and sue me, but as I said, um, I am just sharing my opinions. You cannot sue me for sharing my opinions. And if you try, I mean, have fun. I don't know, like what the, I'm a patient person. I'd wait it out. I'm assuming he would have deleted the brand deal if he could but I don't think he can. And posted an apology video, and this was from three days ago now. I'd like to take a moment to address something that has come to a head over the last week. As many of you know, this investigation has been my all-consuming passion over about the last month. And what started as my honest effort to bring more awareness to a serious public safety matter, my reporting on this topic has since turned into a contentious subject. And I now realize that it's not my place at all to continue chasing this story, despite my own personal connection to it. I bit off a lot. I haven't been sleeping as much as I should. I've burnt myself out and I frankly got a little bit lost in the sauce over this story. I acknowledge that it was insensitive to reference my startup on those two occasions and posts pertaining to this case. I'm a passionate guy who's passionate about the stories that I follow and of course about the content that I make. But I made a mistake by intersecting those two parts of my life and I want to apologize for the families impacted for having overlapped this other part of my life in this, this in an inappropriate setting it won't happen again. And the information about the suspects that my team and I were, have been able to find has been passed to the proper authorities. I've decided to no longer post about this story publicly to prevent further conflict. I, I care so much about this case, I really do, but I realize that I can't report on it while balancing this other pursuit and my life. But also before he posted this, like I mentioned, there are two people who have been uh, vocal about Ken. So we have Justin Burnett and Meredith Lynch. I believe Justin uh, is a combat veteran. So he is former military police specializing in investigations and interrogations. I also should mention that there's quite a few instances. Uh, a bunch of videos have been deleted from Ken's page, like I said, because there was an instance where he had posted that apparently in 2019, the FBI had tried to recruit him previously, but if someone else was able to prove that these are like basically just re like bounce back emails, like if you tried to apply for a job and then it bounced back. But he was also, it seems like only working at Walmart at the time based on what he has shared about working at Walmart. So I don't understand why the FBI would cry be trying to recruit him from working at Walmart. Nothing against Walmart employees. I'm just, I'm not understanding the correlation. There are people who believe that the, all of this from Ken's perspective has been orchestrated so that he could promote foresight. Now, I don't, think so, only in that I can't imagine why his team would see, oh, there's a dead body. You should pretend to almost be abducted and then start getting super involved in the case or trying to then use it as a way to promote the app. I don't think that's logical. That being said, nothing surprises me anymore. So that's that. However, I do think he saw that these were his most popular videos and said, I might as well try and promote the app while I'm at it because this eventually is going to end. Speaking of LinkedIn, just so we're clear, Ken is not alone in using this reprehensible tactic for marketing the app. Check out this boy boss, Stephen Eddy. He's actually the CEO of Foresight, and I want to show you his LinkedIn post the other day. 343 installs in 24 hours. Foresight's going viral. Foresight shattered records yesterday, posting an all-time high of 343 installs in a single day. The CEO said that uh, Ken, the CMO, Ken Wax, has an influential TikTok with a large reach, has been uh, referencing the app in unrelated videos. The maneuver clearly tipped the algorithm in our favor and the results have been truly astonishing. The clever formula is highly reproducible and Ken plans to start mixing a Foresight reference into the end of every other post. By sustaining this rate, Foresight will eclipse 50K installs by early August. Don't miss your chance to ride this wave, only nine is left to join us on Start Engine. Meredith has talked about how there's uh, speculation that Ken has been trying to uh, look for legal uh, PR person and also someone who will help him 
sue allegedly Meredith and Justin. I don't know for what. Slander? Libel? I don't think it's libel because it's not written. I published, I think, so falls under slander. But I don't know why because they're just reacting to what he is sharing. The same way that clout can get you views and make you money, people have the right to respond. You guys have the right to respond to this video. That does not mean that because you say mean things about me, I get to go and sue you. You know what I'm saying? Hi, I don't think Ken is handling this well. I think he is handling this poorly. Is not an illegal statement to make against Ken because it's a statement of personal opinion. Sorry, someone found Ken's private account where he is posting on there as well. Yeah, 1.2 million likes. That makes me think there's quite a few videos on there, Ken. I'm gonna start using this account again. I'm gonna talk about everything on here that I don't feel like I can on my other account because my platform is too big and my brand is too strong or whatever. So I wanna talk about all the personal stuff that like I'm going through or just things that happen to me in my life that are crazy because there's so many of them every day. I searched up the screen name and though he's privated, um, there's quite a few videos that people have like re-uploaded or what have you, but there's also a few where he's replying to comments from his Finsta on his public account. So allegedly a few days ago on his private close friends on Instagram, Ken posted, if you have a TikTok account and 30 seconds for me to call you. Let me know I need your help. And then Meredith also, her account has been mass flagged, they believe by Ken and his team. But um, so the audio from this video has been taken down, but luckily she has captions on screen so I can still read those. What he's saying is that it seems like Ken is planning some type of action potentially against us, Justin and Meredith. I also heard from another source that Ken said that he is taking some type of action because of something else that I have been through on this app, in particular with Rachel's Jew. I have seen the way that really wealthy people can silence small creators. And I think that Ken has potentially some big connections with Foresight. I don't know because it sounds like there's only so many downloads. I mean, they might have investors, but like, this seems like more like a likelihood that if things are this bad and that there's this, they may just get rid of Ken, like from the company, then say, ruin Meredith's life. This is what I've been told. The foresight was really deep pockets with funding from the CEO's family money. Yesterday, I actually heard from the CEO. He sent this DM. Hi, Meredith. It was a lapse in judgment. And this is from Stephen Eddy on LinkedIn. Hi, Meredith. It was a lapse in judgment to overlap those two topics into a single post. And we want to make that right. Ken's a passionate guy who got a little lost in the sauce over the story. Posting an apology on TikTok, removing content, discontinuing his coverage on the cases. Stephen. Update, foresight, and Ken parted with. So just because I know someone's going to bring this up, uh, there are allegedly a uh, true Ken is claiming they are fake, but who knows um, of very disgusting uh, racist things and stuff from Ken's account from 11 years ago. So not going to post those here, but there are claims of that. And Ken apparently replied to Justin and said, those are fake tweets from 2011, even if they are real, which they aren't. They do not reflect my feelings or beliefs at all. There has been a campaign the last 48 hours to destroy me on the internet, which has been spearheaded by a woman who I had blocked five plus months ago for harassing me. I'm not sure how this smear campaign came to pass, but I'm working with TikTok and legal support to get them taken down and sued for this defamation. They're trying to build a platform on my back where I've killed myself to raise public safety awareness and have actually tracked down ill-intentioned drivers and caught them. They're coat riding clout chasers with some sad vendetta. There was some sensitive instances like I talked about of the people whose bodies have been found at the end of the day. These are people who have lost their lives, whether it was from a random mugging, getting in the, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, or they did in fact were just heavily intoxicated and drowned, or they took their own lives. These are people, you know, and all of this surrounding it is just kind of a, just one big mess that is kind of obscuring that reality that these were people who lost their lives, regardless of the circumstances and whether or not there's a serial killer or killers at the center of this. These are people who have passed and their families deserve peace and privacy and justice and to not be used whether to promote an app or do a brand deal or what have you. That's kind of it at this point. Um, I'm sure by the time I get down to the actual posting of this, there will be some updates, so I may have to make some edits, but I think that's everything at this point. That's going to be it. Um, had you heard about Ken's coverage? Have you heard from Justin or Meredith or anything about them? Do you live in any of these areas where people are saying that this is happening? What do you think about the reality of this? Again, I have certain keywords uh, very carefully blocked for obvious reasons, uh, threats against people that I've spoken about, things like that, trying to avoid our threats and things like that from people. So um, be careful with your wording of when you're talking about attacks and things like that down below. Um, just so you know, I'm not deleting comments. Those flags are there for specific reasons. They're held for review. 
if you DM me and you're like, hey, I commented this, I think it's important, this is what's in it, that type of thing, um, then I can try and find your comment. But I usually don't go through the health for review because of aforementioned comments and keywords and why those are blocked. So just be aware of that uh, for the wording that you're using in the comment section. Your comment, let me know what you think. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Social Hands Podcast. Reminder, I have merch. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting on Patreon. If you'd also explore my Patreon, I'll leave down below. Like to my on social media. That'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Though I don't think this is a serial killer situation, um, I think if anything, we can talk more about, you know, proper ways of safety for anyone, not just women, but men and women and in any area, you know, being safe about, you know, leaving places alone, going places alone and things like that. Don't get in a stranger's car. Just don't do it, whether you're sober or not. Whether it's broad daylight or not, don't get in strangers' cars. You are using uh, rideshare apps. Check the license plate. Make sure it's correct. Be safe out there. And just remember, if you are going to cover true crime content, to be respectful of the fact that there are real people and real victims involved of the cases that you are covering. Thank you, Andrew, Allen, Awful, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crispy, Crash, China, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Donnie, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Isaiah, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Justin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexley, Louise, May West, Matt. Madeline, Matt, Matthew, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Philip, Richard, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Taj, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Wichter, Wendy, Will, William, Zendry's Wink.